Uh, hello guys and welcome to another podcast. Yeah, it was a bit over a month since we last did a podcast. And I don't know, like it's me, Peach, and I have with me Lazul. Hello. And do you want to start off with like politics or do you want to start off with like entertainment first? Politics always. Um, I want to start with Somalia because it's what uh, I've been having in my head uh uh, for for this uh this like uh two days mm. and uh you were right okay like uh your assumption that the us is is in somalia right now because of uh trade routes is basically roughly correct okay All right. they are they are there because it is a very strategic location to take hold of basically north north of somalia right because there is a um a, a, an ocean okay that connects with uh europe yeah um with the Mediterranean Sea and all that. Um, so basically, the U.S. is there because they, they actually have a, like a quote unquote like legit reason to be there because there is a jihadists in the in the in the place. There is a, a mujahideen uh, faction, okay, all like right. splinter. Uh, call it Al Shabab. Uh, it, 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 it they stand for the same exact things as any other freaking uh, terrorist, right? Uh, they want to like fundamental Islam, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those yeah, things. understand. Understandable. But the reason that happened was because um, Somalia enter, entered in a clusterfuck, you know, um, a long time before, like since the around the 60s around there. And it was because uh, they had their president and then, and yeah. then uh, one of the bodyguards of that president killed him. And then after that, uh, it's been like 50 they, years or 60 years of civil war yeah exactly like super long and then after that uh, a general uh, in the military of somalia uh made a fucking uh state uh a strike right like like they, they took uh the state by storm okay they like like, the, like in six days something like that super mm-hmm. quickly from from that bodyguard that killed him uh the, that uh president and all that so they take over and that guy is, uh, stays in a dictatorship for like uh, whatever, like 60 years or something like that. I don't know, like, like a long time he stays there. And then like in the 90s, in, in 91, okay, uh, uh, they had like a freaking, uh, they, they had a civil war that was uh, about dethroning this guy, this uh, dictator. Okay, which I forgot the name of, by the way, but um, uh, whatever. Doesn't matter. But, dictator number yeah, three hundred. Yeah, whatever. L- look it up. Okay, so th- they had a dictator and uh, they exiled him. They didn't kill him. He went to Nigeria. Uh, same for his son and all that. Hmm. And now they are the the state is basically non non existent. It's all uh, all of Somalia is balkanized. Okay. Uh, some areas are like kind of controlled by Etopia, which uh, I like because Etopia actually knows how to fucking run their shit. Uh, I, I will prefer if Somalia gets fucking taken over by Etopia, honestly. Uh, they will do a better job, I think. Or but, just, uh, you know, like split it up like they did with the Balkans. You know, actually. like They probably will. I, I don't think Somalia has like a, a fix, really. Uh, they yeah, they because, have the UN there, you know, and all that. But uh, yeah, but uh, the thing is that if you were to ask any Somalians, like, if they think that Somalia exists, I don't think they would say like uh, Somalia. You know, like I think it's more along the lines of you know, like uh, our, eth- you know, our racial group or our li- religious group of Somalia. You know, like yeah, yeah sure, like, there are like, Somalians, but well, they are they are Muslims and all that, but. Uh... I don't yeah, know, because they, 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 they isn't, like, the with, southern with part of Somalia pretty Christian? Uh, no, that's more in Central Africa. Is uh, it so- they, uh, From what I've seen, they are very, very fucking uh, uh, Islamic, super Islamic. they almost, like, fanatic and, and stuff. You know, a lot of these, a lot of that, and blah, 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 whatever. All right. But Because uh, I would assume, I, because this is just me and my... Like that, the southern part would be more Christian due to the fact that you know the proximity with Ethiopia. Um, I believe Ethiopia is uh, Muslim as well, but I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't research that, honestly. No, no, I actually think Ethiopia is pretty Christian. Maybe they have like a big Muslim, but I do know that they're pretty Christian with the fact that 
Oh god, I don't know. I think there's a lot of like Greek Orthodox in Eth Ethiopia. Um, Maybe, yeah, maybe Soviet influences, right? Because they were uh, allies at some point, you know, long oh, ago. Oh, no, no, I think it goes way, way, way long back. I have to double check because I actually have known a decent amount of Ethiopians and all of them have been, like, Greek Orthodox. Maybe there is some Christian influences because uh, Italy, I guess. It wasn't Ethiopia, like, a colony of Italy long ago. I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, well, yeah, let's see. Well, any this this isn't like uh, what I wanted to tell you exactly, but anyway, the the northern region of Somalia is called Somaliland, right? It's uh, they they see themselves as an independent country, mm. uh, but it, but it's not it's not recognized and, and or any of that. And then along the mountain range uh, in in the northern part of Somalia, there is a terrorist group, right? Like this uh, Al Shabaab, you know, the the Mujahideen adjacent uh, terrorist group. Yeah. And they reside there, like uh, and they are like bandits, basically that, that live in the mountains. If and if they see you, they catch you. You know, strolling there, they fucking uh, assault you and fucking rob you the fuck out and or kill you, whatever. Okay, terrorist yes. shit. They do fucking terrorist shit. And and uh, and it's very curious because uh, that those guys, that terrorist faction, is basically the excuse for the U.S. to be in there. Okay, for Biden to uh, drone strike. Uh, uh, Somalis in in that area, <laughs> yeah, and which, just which, kill a bunch of innocent people. Yeah, which by the way, Whoops. yeah, I lo I, I watched the documentaries and all that, and a lot of freaking Somalis complain that uh, their families were lost to fucking drone strikes because uh, drone strikes usually fail. Okay, when the U.S. does them, because the U.S. doesn't care. Okay, like I believe that the U.S. is super fucking cowardly uh, when it comes to war. Okay, they don't they don't like to put their boots on the ground because uh, they are risking the lives of, of their troops, right? Yeah, I don't so, think that's the reason. I think the reason is the fact they don't want to, you know, get bad PR. Because if if American soldiers started dying in big numbers, then yeah. the public would do like they did with well, Vietnam and, and really like demonstrate against the war. Well, Andreas, but, it, but it's like this, okay? Like, like if you don't put your skin in the game, if you use a drone, you also risk killing people, okay? Like, like the U.S. looks bad either way. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like it's different. <laughs> like it is different if because it like does for not look bad for Americans. Yeah, I get yeah, it. yeah, sure. Like, but that's uh, what you mean. No, no, I mean for in America, like no other country is going to be able to put pressure America to not kill innocent people. The only people that are going to be able to do that are the Americans themselves, and unless Americans start dying then people will not or the intervention and in, yeah do like they did with the yeah. vietnam war protest and really be against it uh because it's because, it's because their own were dying in that one yeah the, and, and like people the elders, back right? then they would know someone who died in the war you know now oh, yeah. you don't you probably don't know anyone that have actually died in like these middle eastern wars even if you are from a fucking military family, chances are your sons, whatever, are not going to die. They might, you know, get injured, might get PTSD and then commit suicide. But actual dying in the war is different. Now, if we take in, you know, the suicide rates of American soldiers, like, are super is high... Anyways, but but uh, the point is, it is still bad PR to kill uh, civilians, right? Uh, with drone yes. strikes, uh, yes. it, it looks super bad for the U.S. It's and just it that, creates uh, more terrorists, which I think the yeah, U.S. wants. Exactly. exactly I think exactly. the U.S., Saudi Arabia, and Israel they want to create more terrorists. Like, yeah, gotcha. So that's why they, I don't think it's a mistake that they're killing innocent people. I don't necessarily think they're like, oh, let's kill innocent people. But I think it's more along the line, it doesn't matter if we kill innocent people or whatever, since right. it will, you know, benefit us in creating more terrorists, which will then, you know, give us an uh, excuse to keep bombing. Uh, Americans don't, don't care uh, much about when foreigners, uh, you know, die. Uh, yeah, especially, you know, like that it, that is just, brown uh, and black foreigners. Especially black people, yeah. Uh, you know, fucking crackers and shit, yeah. yeah. Anyway. 
also supposedly the next elections uh of somalia are coming around this uh 25 <laughs> 25 of november so yeah it's it's fun hearing election and somalia in the same sentence I, it's... yeah yeah it's, it's it's obviously going to be like a fucking fake ass shit uh, we'll see whatever uh but i'm going to look at the country around that time to you know to see what happens i guess because i already got into this topic so because i wanted to know what the u.s was doing there so anyway so the reason why they are there i watched like a documentary and then i watched um uh, mm -hmm. Something from Al, Al Jazeera, right? Like news. I watch news and, and a report on Somalia. And the commentator there said that the Pentagon, the CIA, says that uh, a withdrawal of the U.S. troops by Trump is a surrender to Al Qaeda, okay? Because of these guys of the Al Shabaab, okay? Uh, the fundamentalist Islamist uh, guys. And also, it is a gift to China, okay? Which, you know, it's, it's, the, it's a way of saying. Um, of the U.S. that we want to be doing imperialism in Somalia first, because if we don't do it, China is going to yeah. try to con try to come into Somalia and try to resolve their problems, right? And they don't want China to become more influential because they see them as you know the U.S. are too okay. They see them as their their direct competition. Yeah. Um, and uh, and 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 that uh, and and also it said that uh, analysts predicted that Joe Biden will reverse this policy from Trump because Trump withdrew troops from Somalia um, when that report was on, right? Uh, what I watched. So, yeah. So, basically, that's been reversed. That that prediction was correct. Biden went uh, to war again, basically, with uh, against Somalia. Against yeah. Somaliland, uh, more specifically. Yeah, the I north mean, part of, of Somalia only. Yeah, the Americans are never going to remove their troops they're gonna just move them around and they might actually make it so that yeah they're not actually sending american soldiers but what they're sending instead of is american mercenaries you know uh, because then oh that they, they do have soldiers but it, they are very few like uh, yeah yeah that's uh, that's my like point one, they're like one thousand or less uh, i'm not sure yeah, this is like it's probably for like every one American soldier, they probably have like ten to twenty mercenaries that would oh, never, I'll... if they die, they don't have to like report it. So, uh -huh. who knows? Like the actual also, numbers of this, you know. Also, Andreas, did you know that? Uh, well, this is more a rumor and and like uh, leaks and and whatnot. Uh, that say that uh, actually there is a lot of like elite soldiers, elite troopers and shit uh, of America in Africa uh, spread all around the continent. You know, like like waging like shadow wars. Probably. You know what I mean? Like 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 in secret and stuff. Like uh, from elite groups. You know, like uh, fucking the Navy SEALs and freaking uh, yeah. Green Beret, Green Beret and whatnot. Yeah, that's probably true because I mean even the Americans. Admit yeah, I, I, that they are I training, it. you know, like good, the moderate rebels all over the world, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a moderate rebel. Oh, fuck off. You cannot be moderate mm -hmm. and a rebel. Like, moderate people don't become rebels, you know? Like. Yeah. So, so basically, that's how all the fucking shit show happened. You know, essentially, Somalia had a civil war in, in 91, right? Which made the government almost non-existent, which made uh, Butch and the thousand of soldiers, you know, who started uh, that uh, bullshit, you know, the, the American intervention in Somalia. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, America basically pretty much failed. And they, they also, I, I believe that they made a movie about it, you know, that, that the Somalis shoot a, a, an American helicopter down. Uh, I believe it's called the uh, Black Hawk uh down something like that the movie that yeah the yeah I, I i think i recognize the name like the black hawk down movie but i, I don't think i've seen it like i, I don't know it's, for me i have a really hard time watching this like pro military you know like american like cia movies basically you know like yeah basically yeah they are fucking propagandizing you so yeah for free right it, it's like watching it's like consuming call of duty but, yeah, uh, like you're paying for propaganda, you know. Like yeah, exactly. It's it's boring. 
Uh, did you know, by the way, you know, side topic, but uh, did you know that uh, Call of Duty supposedly it's funded by the NSA and shit? Something yeah. like I have heard. I have heard there's a rumor, and it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's very yeah, you know, nationalistic. True. It's it's super nationalistic and shit. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Battlefield is as well. I mean, like, I'm pretty mm. sure they probably get partial funding from, you know, like these groups. Yeah, especially this more recent one. Well, anyway, uh, besides that, uh, Somalia actually doesn't have a lot of like super great resources. Uh, you know, Somalia in itself only has fucking fish, you know, it has concrete, I guess, you know, concrete to fucking make uh, buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. fucking silk and shit, you know, some metals, you know, that, that can be useful, I guess. Um, cement and shit, uh, it, what else? Um, you know, uh, the reason why they want to be there is uh, the route, you know, that they want to take over, pretty much. It's, uh, it's a location. It's very strategic militarily. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, but below that, okay, um, Below the the Horn of Africa, right where Somalia is, uh, yeah. be, below that that uh, fake country, uh, Somaliland, uh, there is uh, Ethiopia, right? And Ethiopia has like a a fraction here, okay, that that goes like a, a bit inside of Somalia, and that uh that is spike, okay, that forms uh, like kind of inside Somalia. Supposedly that place has a lot of oil, okay. Uh, those are rumors, but uh, everyone that, that I have read have said that those uh, are uh, fake claims, okay? They say that there is no oil in Ogaden. Ogaden is called the uh, Dataria of Ethiopia. That yeah, is part I of, mean... you know, Ogaden. They say that there is really no oil in there. So, you know, it can be a reason why the U.S. is there. Maybe not. Who knows, you know? Uh, maybe there I is oil. Maybe, like... maybe not, but... Because I don't know how into the U.S. would be in oil nowadays, you know, especially when going forward, I, you I know, because very... how much oil would there be, you know, like... Probably isn't... not much, you're, you're right there. Yeah, and also it's kind of like, what type of oil would, would it be like sandy oil, which makes it so that, you know, like... It's, it wouldn't be easy to extract oil, I don't think. It's not like Venezuela, in which yeah. Venezuela is like blessed in a sense. The fact that they have easy, they have a fuck ton of oil and easy to extract. Then what the, the Venezuelan might... government and all, you know, their incompetence when it comes to extracting the oil and obviously the oh god, what is it called? Um, restrictions that, that against Venezuela and all that. Yeah obviously hinders yeah the, the sanctions you mean sanctions yeah. there we go yes and i don't know like to me all of this is like we will probably never figure out what is actually you know the reason things happen and just about a bunch of like people who probably shouldn't die are going to die and you know, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's all worthless in the end. What do you mean exactly? Like, uh, give yourself time to explain yourself. Yeah, it's like, oh god, okay, let me... Like, uh, all these wars, you mean? Yeah, or I'll... you know, and... Like, I understand completely, like, in the sense of, like, if you're, like, a crazy idiot motherfucker who just cares about, you know, like, gaining as much wealth and power and all that. I understand, you know, like, oh, uh, we have, and also if you want, like, an empire, which, I mean, America is an empire in everything but name. Yeah. I understand why you would want... I don't know, do, do America have bases in Somalia? They probably do. So yeah. maybe they want to expand their base system. And that's also one of the reasons they're in Somalia. They want a reason to cook China more than anything. They, they want mm. to control this, the, the Gulf of Aden. It's called Aden, you know, Aden. Mm. Um, they want to, to control that, uh, that trial, okay? That, that, uh, that freaking uh, road of water, that body of water, basically. 
because it's very useful uh, for trade and military. And they also got bases in uh, the Djibouti, something like that, which is a, a little bit to the north of uh, Somalia. And they got bases in Kenya as well. So, you know, they, they, they are very, very well spread. Uh, this is this is something that uh, Americans ha have always done. Okay, they, they put bases fucking everywhere and shit. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, like, uh, if America collapses, right? When America collapses, I wonder if those bases are going to take uh, to be taken over by the locals there. Probably yeah. yes. Yes, <laughs> in uh, less than like an hour. Imagine if those bases were rigged though with uh, explosives, right? You know, so, so like the Americans mm -hmm. have like this backup plan, right? That when when we are done um, controlling, you know, these places uh, outside of our borders. Uh, we will fucking explode our uh, all our bases, you know, all our military bases and shit, so they cannot be taken over. Better not get, giving them, uh, you know, ideas, but yeah. But also, I mean, most of their bases seem to be just, you know, like a few tents with like a dirt road, just so they can, you know, land their airplanes and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like warehouses where they store ammunition or whatever, you know, so I can understand like that. Let's explode that. Uh, but I know it doesn't seem to be like it isn't like the base in Germany, which is like its own like small town. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know that base? No, no, no. I don't yeah, know. there is an American military base in Germany. That's mm -hmm. like it. It's like a small town that have, it's like, they don't, sp it, like, there's no German in it. It's all English. There's like American yeah. fast food. It's like a, a, Mer a small American town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Germany. And everything is made in America. And it's just. Just like Chinatown, there is like a, a, a little, a little America in there. Basically. Yeah. But it's uh, even it's, more. It's fucking Chauvinism and shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, like, uh, I think that is like the extreme example. I think most are just probably just a house and a dirt road. And that's their base, you know. Mm -hmm. That they then pay a corrupt government a few millions a year for them to have it. Um, also, did you know that... Uh... The Russia Gate, okay, like like the Russia Gate bullshit uh, of Hillary and all that. Do you know that it was fucking lies? They, they freaking revealed another guy that uh that was found, you know, lying, lying to the FBI about that that shit of um, you know, that tra Trump had ties with Russia and shit. Yeah. And that was that was investigated by the FBI, and they, they didn't find fucking anything. Uh, the name of that guy was uh, Igor Doroshenko. Yeah, I don't know the name yeah. doesn't ring and the bells, but. I, don't yeah, know, he, I think got, I felt like the, like, uh, the Russia Gate stuff was stupid. Yeah, it was fucking stupid. He he was found like three days ago. Okay. It was super recent, so so that's why. Uh, why are they doing this? Just for freaking uh, you know bread and circles, basically. Um, and also you know Julian Assange, you know that they, they have him jailed, and I, I believe that they are fucking torturing him. I, I'm not sure there. Yeah. But. One hundred percent. Yeah, poor they're guy, probably man. doing more like mental. To I mean, I would say solitary confinement is torture. Uh, like mental torture. Like, uh, it's so it's horrific what has happened to Assange and Manning. And oh god, what is the NSA guy? What's his name? Ah, uh, Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden, like, no. they should not be considered criminals. They should be considered heroes, you know? Uh, not to America. America is very, you know how they are. I but mean, not stupid, even uh, here in Sweden, obviously. you know, like, I would say probably in most Western countries, the governments of those countries, like, consider them criminals, you know? Yeah. They went against the, the empire, so... Yeah, which is horrific. Yeah, it's fucked up, but uh, that's the land of the free for you. <laughs> yeah. Really, you know, not really free. Um, who was uh, Pokemon Coliseum, by the way? Did you like it? 
I liked the game. Uh, yeah. Overall, I'll say it was a good game. However, I do not... I liked... In the beginning, it's like, oh man, this is so cool. You know, having the Umbreon, Nespion. Like, you start yeah. off with that, those two Pokemon. You start off as not a newbie trainer. You start off as like an experienced trainer. Yeah, you never see that again, by the way. Yeah. That is, that is unique to it. Yeah. So that was cool. However, mm -hmm. I think it took too long until you were able to... Uh, the what's it called shadow fi uh, like purify your Pokemon, the, your other Pokemon. Yes. So you were yeah. forced into just using those two, basically. Like, yes, yes, for too long. Um, uh, I like that personally. Uh, Pokemon Coliseum is probably, you know, so far my favorite game. Maybe it's because I'm nostalgic because I played that game when I was super young and mm. stuff. Also because my favorite Pokemon is uh, Umbreon. Uh -huh. um, and uh, and uh, I, I like it a lot because uh, back then it appealed more to me, right? Because uh, you see the aesthetic of the main character, you know, he's edgy, he's an anti-hero and shit, and, and you are in... I was like, like a pre-teen, okay? I was like in my pre-teens uh, yeah. years, and then, I don't know, I was amazed by that. And also because um, I like the system, I like that it's more like an RPG, right? Where you don't get to really just lurk in the freaking uh, grass like in all the pokemon games and then you pick your party members now he, here it's like a more linear right you you gotta pick yeah. whatever you, you are given uh, which i, I liked that. i like the limited choices of pokemon um, yeah me too i just it wish ma makes you... i would have been able to purify them quicker you know or mm -hmm. earlier i don't think you the purification process i think the speed was okay uh i just mm -hmm. wish you could do it earlier in the game if I could I'm have got, sorry. if I could have purified my Pokemon, maybe like, I don't also, know, an, uh, earlier. Uh, an, uh huh. Also, another thing to note, Andres, is that uh, in the story of that game, uh, I think it's really cool that you get to see right uh, how the the criminal subcultures in Pokemon um, live, right? Because you get to go to the under, what's called the under, right? Their their city, yeah, the uh, little... below the. Yeah, they, they, they're a little underground spot city, there, right? Uh huh. And that's really cool to see, right? It's like the Yakuza in fucking Japan and shit. They have like their red light centers and shit. And you, you get to see that side, and you never get to see that shit in, in any other fucking Pokemon game. Are, uh, all the other Pokemon games are too like uh, pink. You know what I mean? Like they, they are like uh, very kitty, like, mm. like for kids and shit. I don't know, maybe black and white and black and white too. You got to see a little bit of that. Um, uh, you know, being honest, I'm not sure about that because I I have never played the game. So oh yeah, yeah. Um, you, you, you got to see a little bit of that in those games. Uh -huh. Because I mean, those games, the evil team are Peter. Uh, I I stopped playing. I I stopped playing Pokemon uh, after uh, Pokemon Coliseum. Actually, that was like my last generation. Uh, right. Then then the, the, then like years uh, years apart, I played a uh, Diamond. Uh, in emulator it was cool it was decent uh yeah if you were... and that was that was the last one that i played yeah platinum you know because diamond pearl and platinum platinum mm -hmm. was such a good improvement to diamond and pearl um so if i would recommend if if you were going to play a gen 4 game platinum is the game to play it's, aren't it's, they it's making like... like a remake right now yeah, they're making like remakes, but not of Platinum. They're making remakes of like Diamond and Pearl. Don't it doesn't look very good. I'll just put that out there. Uh, -huh. uh It seems like they have reverted back the improvements they did for Platinum. Huh. And uh, what else? They're removing some like quality improvements that the later games had because they wanted it to be more you know authentic to the old games but yeah. then they're also doing stuff that isn't authentic to the old games like for example in the newer games you can use tms as much as possible you don't just get one if you get a tm let's say i get a tm for thunderbolt i can use it how many times as i want you know oh. that's that's amazing so you don't have to grind you know, for these, like, TMs. 
they're yeah, doing that right. into one time use. And in the old newer games, you don't HM moves, you know, moves that you have to use, like cuts and mm-hmm. surf and stuff like that, you know. Um, sounds pretty cool, yeah. yeah. Saves time. I don't like those type of moves, you know, like in the newer games. You, those moves no longer, you know, like, no longer exist. Like, in Sun and Moon, you have, like, Pokemon that you just send out. Like, instead of use, instead of having to teach one of my Pokemon Surf, I now, I just have a, you know, like, I can just call a Pokemon that uses Surf for me. Oh, or in even, Sword even and surf Shield. Is, is a good move, but yeah. yeah, or in Sword and Shield, your bike, you know. Your bike works as uh, like a surf Pokemon, so that oh that's true. I yeah. don't remember that. Yeah, so that gives you you know freedom to choose your team. If I wanted to be go- use a team that only is Fire type Pokemon, I couldn't really do that in the earlier games because I would have to have like a non Fire type Pokemon so that I could use you know Cut, Rock Smash, Strength. Mm-hmm. You know, like Surf, Waterfall, Whirlpool, like, oh my fucking god. So, they've gone back on that. Yeah, the the HM slaves and whatever. Yeah, like, I don't like Um, that. Yeah, it was a waste of slot in your party. It was annoying. Um, So, anyway, if I do play the newest Pokemon game, I'm playing in in this uh, Juzu emulator that I told you about. The Switch emulator. Because I didn't knew that that uh, shit existed. Until very recently, and holy shit, it would have saved me money and fucking time. Because the only game that I have played in the in freaking uh, in the in the Switch is a uh, Smash, and that's it. That's the only reason that I got that shit. Hmm. And uh, it's really really sad because uh, it's not that great, honestly. If if I knew before that there was going to be an emulator so soon, I would have uh, uh, used that instead. You like know? not to just wasted the money, I guess. Now, uh, tell me about the the freaking Pokemon series. You know, season ten. You told me you were there. The Pokemon. Oh, yeah, series. I'm actually at season eleven now. Uh-huh. Um, and let me see. I'm in season eleven, episode eighty overall. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl has one hundred ninety-one episodes. I'm on episode eighty. Um. And it is a really good season. Gen 4, so far, probably the best Pokemon season. Um, I feel like pretty much everything in it is really good. Like, we don't have a Max character, which I think was like a... Even though Max wasn't that bad, because we didn't actually see him a fuck ton. Uh, uh, But uh, Generation 4 of Pokemon... You know, May, Brock, and Ash, they work really well together. I really like May and her contest style and all that. And the fact that she is struggling a lot. Like, so far she has actually lost more than she's won Mm -hmm. in her contests. And her rivals are very competent. Even Jesse from Team Rocket is good now. Um, she have won. Um, so who is, who is by the way? Who is the the green haired guy that that has like a crutch on May and stuff? You know, and then they they go at it back at each other and stuff. Green Supposedly hair? they have like there is a guy with green hair in the Pokemon. I remember, I remember that from the cartoons when I was uh when I was younger. I, I used to watch them, right? And I remember that there there was a green haired guy that is like around the age of May. You know, the this character they were telling me, right, May? And uh she has a crotch on him and, and, and he has a crotch on her and stuff. But it's like not direct. They they just uh make you Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh Drew. Follow. Yes. Uh Drew, there you go, that guy. Yeah. He was really good. That was generation they- three. I know because uh, chicks that that like anime, they chip the those characters a lot. You know, they they chip them together. Yeah, those two characters. I also chip them together uh, because uh, they they are you know they, they along, work really know? well. And then in the end, la- later episodes, like 
There is something like... between them. I mean, both of them seem to like each other. Then if it is yeah. a romantic or if it's just friendship, who knows? It's like a romantic rivalry kind of. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. I remember that because that's those were like the last episodes episodes that I watched. Yeah. And, and they I, both I, I decided prepared. to go to, you know, Johto for training. They gonna fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, and he also had cool Pokemon, you know, he had Flygon, Masquerade, Roselia, and then something else. Yeah, yeah, that, that guy drew has a Roselli, I remember that. Anyway, uh, so uh, do you plan on, on playing Pokemon XD? That, I didn't play that one. Yeah, I actually am playing it right now. Really? And and have you recorded episodes and all that? Yeah, I'm guessing. I've recorded up to like episode 9. I don't know shit about that game. I just know that it's not a, not as good Pokemon Coliseum, in my opinion. I'm not sure. Mm. Like, like I, I played the first part of that game. And then yeah. uh, I... I stopped caring, okay, because uh, because you play as a kid, okay, like like the novelty of Coliseum was that you were like an ex criminal, that you were a, a teenager, you were not a freaking kid, like in all the fucking games, already yeah. fucking done. So uh, it was like more edgy, it was more like uh, cutting yeah, I edge. I mean, it isn't as edgy. Uh, uh, yeah, it's more comedic, and I think it no. works in the way. I mean, for what they're going for, I think it works. Um, I like the shadow system in the game. Uh, it's better done, yeah, for sure. It's, it's better so done. You, yeah, especially how you can like. Before there wasn't a reason to have uh, shadow Pokemon. They 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 fucking sucked. Yeah, and, and you now can purify is... a lot of Pokemon at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm actually really liking it so far. Uh, I would say so far I'm enjoying it more as a like a gameplay wise and all that more than Coliseum. Oh. I think the story is a bit like meh. Uh, but I do like that it's like a sequel to Coliseum. Like it is like five years after Coliseum. And you can yeah. see you, you see that, right? In the game and those yeah. games, th those series of games, uh, need an animation, in my opinion, because they have a they have solid protagonists. You know, they they have a they have a story to tell as well. Mm. And I think that the envir and the environment that it's based on Arizona is works really well. Uh, I like the aesthetic of the game. I like uh, how edgy it is. I like uh, everything that tried to be. Okay, it, it tried to be different, and that's what I like about mm. it. Uh, Sword and Shield, on the other hand, is is more Pokemon. Okay, yeah, like uh, the gym battles, you know, uh, one against yeah. one. Mo most of them, right? Because I, I don't know if there are 2v2s two uh, in some gym battles. I don't remember. Oh, but uh, I don't know either. But, I, I, I just played until like the fire gym leader. But, and I, then I, was like, yeah. but I, I watched I watched a stream of uh, Sword and Shield. And uh, the streamer said at the end of the at the very end of the stream in the post game, he said that the game was super fucking easy, extremely easy. I know that Coliseum is it's easy, you know. Well, you actually ran into some challenges yeah. uh, because uh, you you entered in, into some coliseums and they were like twenty levels above and shit, and that was that was sick as fuck. By the way, those moments, you know, golden. Yeah, as I ran, you're like, oh god, and they just happened in XD as well. Um, okay, they are there as well. Cool. Uh, not necessarily that I'm twenty levels lower, but it's like, oh god, like, oh god. One on one now, all my Pokemon are fucking dead. Uh, uh, they switch it up, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, I mean, then it also depends on how you play it, because I'm someone who really doesn't like overleveling, and I'm someone who would, you know, I'll not fight every single trainer, I'll not do everything, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of like how they design the games. Uh, they, I don't think they expect people to do everything. So the levels are like on the, like the level cap that they're doing, the trainers are based off. You're not going to fight everyone. You know, you're not going to be overleveled. Uh, I see. 
Yeah, and I think it's the same with Pokemon Sword and Shield. I mean, to me, it doesn't seem like it's super easy. Um, but that's because I make sure that my Pokemon are lower level than what I'm going up against. The thing is also that uh, on, on one versus one Pokemons, you know, that, that have that, that mechanic, you know, super um, super deep in their, in their gameplay, right? Uh, you can just uh, boost the Pokemon the fuck out and then swipe the whole fucking team, yeah. usually. Okay, so the strat is very easy, okay? In those Pokemon, just uh, Fitch, you know, get a fucking Magikarp like, that is like level, level 30, something like that, and then um, level him up with, I don't know, a fucking Rare Candy or X, X Share, right? Or, and mm -hmm. whatever, make a, have a Gyarados and then uh, get Dragon Dance and then use Dragon yeah, Dance three times and, and you won, and that's it. That's just try and it repeats, right? That's yeah. a strategy for all the fucking battles. Yeah, and, but, and it gets, but it's it kind of like boring. then you have to put some restrictions on yourself. Like, don't use that strategy. You know, that's... I don't know, like, that's how I play these games. When I, when I feel like, all right, this is a super good strategy and it's too good, I will not use it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I guess, oh. you know, like, I do think that double battles are my favorite type of Pokemon. Yeah, like, yeah, or it will be cool to have triples as well. Uh, but, uh, you know. Triple yeah, battles is... was something that existed in black and white. Mm -hmm. Those Pokemon games. Well, not only that, but that... also rotation battle. In which you have That's three... Really... Yeah, in which you have three Pokemon out. Uh, but yeah. only one fights. And then you rotate them, so you have to predict what Pokemon they will rotate to, depending on your attacks. Mm -hmm. um, so that was also a funk mechanic. Sadly, mm -hmm. in those two games, Black and White, even though that was completely new battle style that they introduced, Triple Battle and Rotation Battle, mm -hmm. there's only like two or three matches in the entire game that are either of those things. So like, oh, that's what super a, fucking sad. What, what the, a huge disappointment! They introduce yeah. a new battle style and they only use it three times. That's fucking. And sad. it's also not, like only one of those times are required. The other two, you have to go out of your way to try and find someone that would do that. What a huge fucking. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I would like to yeah. see a Pokemon game like that's Colosseum and right. all that that forces you. To double battle and all that, you know? I agree. Or Pokemon even Coliseum. triple battle. Like, make a modern Colosseum game. You can make it so that it's set, I don't know, like 10 years after Pokemon XD. You know, keep this story that would be up. so freaking cool, yeah. Yeah, because I don't want them to do a remake. I don't want to do a remake of Colosseum or Pokemon XD. Do something new. Like, I don't give a fuck about remakes. If I wanted to play the a remake, I would play the original game, you know? I agree. When Nintendo makes remakes, it's super disappointing as well, yeah. Yeah, and it um, seems like that's all they do. Like, <laughs> Because it's they're fucking lazy and it's easy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm telling you, uh, it feels more like an RPG when you have like uh, double battles or triple. So, mm. And I like that. That's, that's super good. Because uh, that's what Pokemon is pretty much. It's an RPG game. And it also yeah. makes it so that certain Pokemon that might not have been good in single are now good in bat in doubles. Yeah, exactly. And also some attacks as well, like Sarf, you know. Yeah. That that uh, do multi-target, you know. I, I liked, for example, the fact that in Coliseum, uh, at the end game, right in the late game, they use Earthquake a lot. Uh, er earthquake uh, paired with Protect, right? Yeah. You saw you, you saw that strategy a lot, and it makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really good that the that the fucking uh, CPU does that. Yeah, and um, also the fact that the CPU have strategies that it uses. Uh, like for some reason, normal Pokemon games don't do that. Like the main games, but this mm -hmm. old, you know, third-party Pokemon games, they actually were smart enough to use strategies. Yeah, you you can kind of tell that it was more aimed aimed for uh, teenagers. Mm. Uh, and it was and it was because of that because uh, maybe they realized that they that the Pokemon fans were growing up and they adapted to that to that mm. fact right that that's what that's what I think um, why are you having some ROM problems with uh, XD with Pokemon XD uh, the game keep kept 
freezing on me. Um, and I, like, it kept crashing and freezing. I, I do not know why. Uh, I mean, the ISO is not, like, optimized. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, but, uh, but they... I have fixed it. Uh, ah, okay. I did manage to fix it. And after I fixed it, so far, I have not experienced any freezing mm -hmm. or whatever. So it seems to be going to go fine. Um, I think I fixed the problems around episode 6 or 7. Ah, it took you some time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because it wasn't that big of a problem, like, it did cause frustration, but it didn't happen, like, all the time. Uh, and one thing that's super weird, and it still happens, the game, like, goes into slow motion when you try and purify your Pokemon in that forest. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so that's one thing. Uh, but now when I can purify them in the lab, it's fine, you know. Uh, so I don't need to go to the forest to purify. Uh, so it doesn't really matter that it goes into like super slow mo when it tries to do that. You can accelerate the game anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, I do that. But even then, like it goes into like super slow mo. It doesn't matter if the game is accelerated or not. Yeah, it loses frames. Yeah, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that. Yeah, legit freaking uh, the PC is the best console. Yes. For real. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just been... too bad that PC prices and all that have gone so high in the recent years. Like I would yeah, not because... be I would not have been able to afford building my PC if I would have built it now, you know. Uh-huh, because of uh graphic cards and all that yeah, and uh, everything. So, you know like everything has so... gotten more expensive. It's... Yeah, solid state hard drives and all those things. Uh, mm. Which, by the way, I plan I plan on getting another SSD. Uh, by the way, mm. I, I need I need another uh, solid state hard drive because uh, my computer came with very low memory in itself. You know, uh, because it's a gaming laptop. You know, and that's mm. the only defect that it ca that it came with. You know, it, it only has one hard drive, one solid state hard drive, and it's uh like what two hundred gigabytes something like that. It's very low. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, I also only have one SSD, uh, but mine then, is, you know, 500. And then I uh, have, you know, hard drives for everything External or, or internal? I have one, ex I have, my SSD is internal, and then I have one internal HDD, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes. And then I have two external HDD, you know. Hard, hard disk drive, something like that. Yeah, I think um, something like that. So uh, I I don't want to get an HDD. I want to get another SDD because mm. I because I, I want to have a, yeah I want to have a lot of games installed mm. basically. Uh, so that that is my reasoning and and uh, but I I also plan to record videos right and uh, when you record yourself in a camera and all that you you waste a lot of gigabytes in that process. So h how do you store everything up? I, I I actually just store it in my HDDs, you know, because oh. for the price and the newer ones are very fast as well. Well, I say newer ones, the ones I have are ranging from like 8 to 20 years old, 8 or not 20, 8 to 15 years old, you know, and they still work mm -hmm. completely fine. Uh, because, for example, you can get what I have, I have a 3 terabytes uh, HDD. Which is actually, uh, that's the one I use. You know, I, I have games on it. I have my videos all on it. I record to it. I understand. And if I would have used an SSD for that, I probably would have paid like eight times more money, you know, for the, same, for the same space. Uh, I, I don't think that there are uh, SSDs with uh, a lot of terabytes. Uh, they might go up to like one terabyte now. Um, yeah, may maybe that's true. May maybe one but, terabyte is true, but, but three terabytes, I I'm not sure. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I I don't play many games that I feel like need the extra speed from an SSD. 
I will because because I plan on installing a Skyrim VR and I will plan to mod that shit, you know, the fuck up mm -hmm. with very cool shit. So uh, it's going to take some fucking space. And also VR is very very fucking laggy if you uh, if you have it in a hard drive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the plan. Have you seen Squid Games? Oh, what's it called Squid? It's called Squid Games. Squid. I'm not. I'm not fucking interested. In, like it's a. Uh, it's like battle royale, or something like that. And, no, no. And honestly, it, maybe I. I don't know. Uh, but that show, uh, my mom and I watch it, and it was actually pretty good. Uh, for what it was, I mean, a few episodes were a little like, oh god, come on, get on with it. Legit, I'm like, a, I'm, I'm kind of a hater for mainstream shit. When something gets mainstream, I, I just, I don't know, I, I lose interest. Oh, usually. really? Yeah, uh, really, really. Seriously, even if it's good or whatever. Uh, like no. I, so to me, it's and, like, if it's good, it's good. Uh, like, but, I don't uh, care what other people f feel. No, well, it repels me from wanting to watch it. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah I want to be the, that's I what I mean. I want, like, to, I want to be the, the the hater. I want to be the hipster. Shit, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean I that's what I mean. One. Like I, I'm someone who couldn't do that because I don't care what other people feel like about entertainment. You you, you don't even become aware of it, right? Like uh, you don't even uh, check that out. I yeah, guess. I don't. But I do. But I do. So yeah. I get it spoiled. I guess. So uh, and and also, I my family has a Netflix uh, subscription and shit, but I, I don't have it. I don't yeah. have it in my computer or anything. Or maybe I can ask for it, right? But uh, I don't care enough to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the only shit that I'm interested uh, about watching in uh, in freaking uh, in Netflix is uh, the anime Devilman, and then uh, freaking uh, what else? Uh, Castlevania, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe some fucking Chinese show just just to see how is the, their cinematography and shit. Oh, there's also a really good uh, Korean uh, drama that the it's called uh, Sisyphus. Maybe I, I'm interested in that one. Mm. You know, uh, because I like philosophy and I like uh, you know deep shit and whatnot. And maybe maybe it's really good. You yeah. See, I don't know. Um, but, uh, so that's one thing. And then. But I'm not. I'm not going to go out of my way to seek to watch those things. Right? Yeah, I'd like. not at all. I mean, another thing that I've watched. Well, I've watched three episodes now. It's called Maya and the Three. And it is like an animated like Netflix show. And, yeah. oh man, like to me, it has potential. It's like based off a Merry Indian stuff, you know. Uh, oh, okay. Like uh, Navajo stuff and stuff like that, right? Like pre-European Merry Indian, you know. Taka, Tekka, something like that, and you know the God of War, and you know oh, stuff okay. like stuff like that. Uh, the problem I have with the show is that they throw in a big problem, is that they are speaking English, you know, because that's the that's the language they they're speaking in the show. And then all of a sudden yeah. they'll say like Spanish words, <laughs> and to me it's like what the fuck. This is so stupid. It takes you out of the show because you're in the show and like, okay. Like, they are talking to each other and they are speaking their native language. But we are just hearing it as English. Like, we are perceiving what they're saying as English. But they're actually speaking, I don't know what these specific American Indians used to talk about. Or what their language was called. Let's call it Indian number 66. They, spoke, they got a lot of languages, yeah. Yeah, so they spoke a Merry Indian number 66. And then all of a sudden they throw in like, Oh, mi amigo, eh? Ese, eh? It's oh, like, shit. Oh, my God. And it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, Mexicans in Mexico don't talk like that. Uh, that's, that's what Mexicans in the U.S. talk like. It's not like a, in Mexico they, they don't say shit like that. Yeah, and it's kind of like... The slangs are different. Yeah, but not only that, it's stupid because the Amer Indians did not speak Spanish. Yeah. I mean, only, uh, Sp only after they were conquered, right? Yeah, like, okay, sure, their rape babies and all that spoke Spanish. But the Amer Indians did not speak Spanish. They're yeah, using that know. Spanish talk. This, is, this was the Amer Indians, this was their actual language, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Like, no. It's not like the road to El Dorado when those two Spanish guys sometimes throw in Spanish. Because that makes sense. They were from Spain. Yeah. And they throw in a little bit of Spanish words here and there to just be like, okay, so these guys are actually Spaniards, you know. So it, yeah. it helps with the world building. That and this show... Weird, by the way. That movie is so fucking good. El Dorado is, is excellent. I might rewatch it one day. Mm. Because I don't remember it. Um... And but I yeah, mean, it, this it, it, show it has really I, good hips. It's just like, you know, the Road to El Dorado. Like, the females, really attractive. Like, they're yeah, really yeah. good looking. Uh, the males, I don't give a fuck about them. All the males in the show are just one no dumb warrior characters. Like, me like war, me stupid. You know, it's like, ah, oh, fuck off. Yeah, uh, you, you like big, big booty bitches, yeah. Yeah, Which... but also like, what like characters are more than just one thing uh-huh. um and well there is actually the 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 last episode i watched episode three was really good and one problem i had with the show is that we only had one character <laughs> you know up until episode three now we have two characters uh, so we'll see how the show ends up being if it's good or not i don't know um yeah but yeah also i don't know if you've seen this show uh but it's a show called sex education i don't care about it <laughs> yeah it doesn't, doesn't sound interesting in the least yeah like i've watched the first two seasons there's a season three i mean the seasons are like eight episodes and uh-huh. i like it it's really good um uh, it is it is about just a school where and then the main character is a virgin who gives out sex education to you know other students uh just like the internet yeah yeah like in the internet it happens with every single man that i have encountered in the internet they are a virgin that gives sexual advice to people i don't fucking know why and even fucking relationship advice. Yeah, but in this they don't case, have a fucking GF and they don't know what. Yeah, but in this case, he's pretty good at it because you know, like his oh, really? mom is a sex educator, and you know, all, oh, okay. all that. So there is like, and his mom is like so annoying towards him. You know, like, are so open about sex talk with him, and I think it has given him like, he's like a fr- he can't have sex. He gets like super afraid. Uh, yeah, he gets bit dizzy. Yeah, it's like I mean, I don't think you would like the show, but it's I like, like a it. it's, it's lapstick humor, right? No, it isn't. It's I don't even know how I would call it a comedy show. Like maybe there are maybe it's supposed to be a comedy show, but I don't see it like that. I see it like a a slice of life. Yeah, like a slice of life, like maybe a little bit of drama, a little bit of comedy, a little bit you know, like show. Uh, now I haven't watched season three, even though season three have been out for a long time. Uh, uh I have already asked you this question, but uh, what's your favorite Dark Souls? Dark Souls one, right? Yeah, because you you made a, your first uh, complete playthrough of of it, right? Yeah, I think Dark Souls one is my favorite. It's between Dark Souls one and Dark Souls two. Um, my favorite is two, you already know. And my favorite Pokemon Coliseum as well. I have weird tastes, you know, but uh, this is who I am. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, it, I would say it depends on what day you ask me. It's either two or one. Uh, uh, I really like them in the mechanics of, of making everything, uh, you know, the Estus ranking and everything uh, slower in Dark Souls 2. Because yeah. it, it actually, it is actually punishing, you know. Yes. It's punishing to freaking, um, uh, to chug and all that. And I like that a lot, that that balance. And also yeah. the dual wielding and those things. Uh, and it felt different. It felt anyway, the same, have, but different, you know? The you thing I did not watched... like about... No. Okay, uh, no, 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 go, go on, yeah. continue. The things I did not like about Dark Souls 3 is that when I played yeah. Dark Souls 3, it felt like, why am I not just playing Dark Souls 1? Yeah, exactly. To I me. fucking hate it as well. It's my least favorite one. Uh, it's so fucking generic. Yes. It, did you know that it's the same fucking engine as Bloodborne, right? They've uh, been nope. doing the same. They've been doing this. 
they've been doing the same fucking game since freaking since freaking Bloodborne. You know, there is Bloodborne, Dark Souls Three, Sekiro, and then Elden Ring. All of those four games are in the same fucking engine. They are the same oh. shit, and and you can tell. You can tell it's the same fucking shit. Yeah. So I'm go I was going to ask you that. I I'm going to pop up the the question, right? Which is uh. Do you are you down to watch uh, the Elden Ring uh, gameplay trailer, so you see how how that's going to be? Yeah. Because uh, I'm, I'm because it because I, I I already watched some of it and I already spoiled it myself and uh, I, I'm a hater. I didn't like it. I'm not going <laughs> to say it. anything. I'm not going to say anything, but uh, I didn't like it. It, it. it looked too generic to me. It I mean, we like, could watch uh, it together and just talk shit yeah. as we watch it. Who knows? Um, it it fucking looks like Dark Souls 4, let's say. Okay. It's a it's it's like a super extensive DLC on Dark Souls 3. That's how uh, it seemed to me. Hmm. Yeah, you can but... do more shit on it. You, you can do more shit on it. Like like it, it combines a lot of games. You know, hmm. it's really cool that it's really cool that you can use a horse now, for example. And the animations are good. Okay. Oh, okay. You so can, you can use a horse. Yeah, but but the world is mostly empty. Is what I don't like about modern open world games. Oh, they are so. Okay. They're, oh, okay. Yeah, they 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 are so fucking hollow. They are so fucking empty. The the good thing is that the areas, okay, that you visit, the, the dungeons and shit, they are going to be like a traditional Dark Souls, right? They are going to be very complex on the inside, right? But you oh, have wait, to arrive is it going, there. Is it going to be like the Open dungeons world. and all that are going to be like original Dark Souls, which tends to be good? But then, yeah, while traveling exactly. between those things, you have to go through open world. Uh, a shitty open world, yeah. Oh my god. Exactly. One of the good things about Dark Souls is that everything was connected. Yeah, I agree. I, I like the Metroidvania. I prefer to have a Metroidvania game, uh, 2D or, or 3D, than an open world game. Honestly, it's better fucking world design. Everything is more condensed. Everything is more condensed. And, and the fun shit, it's more uh, packed together, right? Yeah. And if it's so open world, the, the fun is fucking you know spread out 200 fucking meters apart and shit and it's annoying it's yeah. fucking annoying i i don't like that shit uh you can jump now by the way you know it's the same fucking jump animation as in sekiro <laughs> um but yeah uh the magic looks uh super fucking cool it looks like more viable but i don't know like a magic in every single fucking dark souls game is often bad you know it, mm. it is bad for pvp the PvP on this game, uh, it, it's looking uh, bad in my opinion because uh, it's the same chugging animations in Dark Souls uh, as in Dark Souls Three, and that chugging anima animation makes it impossible to punish it because you can chug while moving, which is cool and all, but uh, you know you just uh, don't, don't get a time. You, you know you, you don't get a window to punish the the healing. Yeah. And so I think that everyone in the PvP is going to be fucking uh, healing and shit. It's going to be fucking ruining. Uh, the experience. Uh, Dark Souls 2 had it the most balanced, in my opinion, when it came to PvP. And I like PvP in those games, so... Mm. I'm probably not going to buy this game. I, I didn't buy Sekiro either, I didn't buy uh, uh, Bloodborne, I regret buying Dark Souls 3, I should have pirated that shit. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm probably going to pirate Elden Ring. I don't care about it. Mm -hmm. Truly. Uh, I'll uh, I'll wait and see. I mean, I I will not buy it. I'll I'll not pre-order it, and I'll not buy it at full price. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'll see what I'll do with with Elden Ring if I decide to even play it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really in the like the the Dark Soul playstyle mood yet. Um, yeah, me neither. I'm I'm worn out of that because I I played the 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 three, you know, in the of the main series. So. Yeah, and just drained all enjoyment of Dark Souls out of you. It's always the same shit, you know. It's like a roll attack, you know. Look for a window to attack, and boom, then roll out, and then go in and attack oh. and shit. And it's the much setting. Just, well, I guess we'll see when I watch oh, the the trailer. Oh uh, yeah, the, the trailer the to is, see. But what I would see, want see, yeah. the thing is that. Dark Souls 3 could have been interesting if it was different setting. Um, I agree. I absolutely fucking Maybe agree. make it like maybe like an African Dark Souls like you play as like in the Middle East, ancient in the fucking African, Middle East, Middle East China, yeah. well not necessarily China actually. I think 
the Middle East is fine, okay? The Middle East sounds good. Or, or Byzantine Empire, okay? Byzant Byzantine will be super... Fine, yeah, you know? instead of just medieval Western Europe. Like, I'm so yeah, tired of that. Like, everything yeah. is like fucking like medieval Western Europe. Like, it's, it's always fucking German castles, right? Like, gothic style and shit. Yeah, or Japanese. Neo, neo gothic and shit, and, and, and you... It's like a, the, the architecture can be found like in Notre Dame, right? Or in Germany. And that's yeah. it. Only, I believe, those two places and shit. And it's, it gets fucking annoying. Dude. Like, uh, I, I used to like it a lot, that type of architecture, you know, that it looks like a fucking beautiful Disney castle and shit. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you get fucking, you know, burnt out of the architecture style as well. Uh, it's kind of you, like, you, 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 you prefer I, to I want, need a you break. know. No, no. And you also know what's the fucking problem with that shit? That uh, it was used for Bloodborne, right? Because mm. uh, it fits. It fits in Bloodborne because it, it is a dark game. You know, it, it's supposed to be gothic and shit. Mm. And then it was used the same fucking style with the tombstones and you know dark fantasy and you know uh, German and shit. It was used for Dark Souls Three, as you you saw. You know, you did a playthrough of that game. Mm. Then it was used for uh, what else? Uh, I mean, is Demon Souls any different? Yes, no, no, no. Yeah, because yeah, I, I know they did a remake of it, and I felt like if that memory. remake came out on PC. Yeah, it, no, it has the same fucking architecture style in Demon Souls as well. Okay. It didn't used to have it like that, by the way. Before the remake, the castle was just a standard fucking castle. It was blocky and all that shit. It didn't have the fucking gothic fucking decorations to it. Mm -hmm. I prefer it. I I prefer it that way because I'm already burned out, you know, from Dark Souls Street. Yeah. But uh, in the remake, it's exactly like a fucking gothic fucking castle and shit. A gothic German fucking bullshit. Okay. Uh, they fucked it up. The aesthetic of Demon Souls uh, in, 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 in little ways, you know, that you can notice. Uh, and I don't like that shit in the remake, right? So I prefer to play fucking Demon Souls original. It, it has more taste, you know, to me. Even though it's a primitive old game, right? Mm. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I, also, usually, you know, you're going to note, uh, you're going to notice, right? Uh, in in these uh, Miyazaki games, right? From uh, from this from software, right? From this developer, yeah. uh, usually the the first level, the first fucking level of those games, uh, is is the best developed one. Uh, Undeadberg, freaking a uh, Lottery Castle, uh, the freaking uh, who who it was called in Dark Souls Two, the. Uh, Tower, Heidi, uh, Heidi Tower, Tower of Heidi. Oh, yeah. Tower. Heidi. I, I like. I, I actually like that one, and I, and also like the something of the giants, right? Like the forest of the giants. Yes, yes, forest of the giants. You, usually, the the first uh, levels are the the most complex ones. Uh, I expect the same fucking meme to repeat itself uh, on these Dark Souls. Uh, well, it's it's not a it's not a Dark Souls, right? It's Elden Ring. But yeah. it's basically dark, dark. You're going to see it's Dark Souls Four. Yeah, uh, because really. I mean, it makes sense that you would put most effort into that because that's probably what most people are going to experience the most. You know. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I, you want to have a strong start so that people will continue playing. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Makes makes absolute sense. But uh, if the quality drops uh, after that level, you know, it's it's not a good game, really. Uh. But uh, but we're going to see. Um. Anyway, so uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm just gonna do a bit of a announcement right here. Is that a Peach mm -hmm. Advent Tea Calendar? Uh, I think I actually did a video. Did I do a video where I? Uh, maybe I should check that out. Uh, but it will happen this year. Um, I have. I bought a calendar. Well, it's not yeah. actually a calendar, but. There is like 25 different teas. Uh, and that's how it's going to be. Um, it's probably not going to be anything special. It's going to be like the previous years where I just drink tea, answer comments, and just talk a little. Uh, and that's how it's going to be in December. Just make it a bit comfy, cozy. And yeah. Also, we did talk about Col Coliseum. Not Coliseum, Pokemon XD. Uh, that thing will probably not go public until next year. Because I feel like in December, pretty much all the videos are just going to be the T Advent T calendar. And then 
it'll go back to normal on in January. So I actually okay. have a big backlog backlog of videos uh, that are just unlisted. Um, maybe uh, if I'm bored, maybe if I'm bored, I will watch that playthrough. So can you give me like a the link to the private uh, video yeah, yeah. Of, uh, how do you call it the, the catalog right yeah, yeah the, uh, with, it's with... playlist it's unlisted uh, and also if, if anyone wants to I'll, I'll send the link to you Lazul. but if, if anyone wants Thank to watch you. it uh, just go to my profile and then it it should be there in like in playlist um, if you go to profile and then there's like a playlist let's call it's called let's place new to old it's mm -hmm. there 